Welcome back to another look at the draft prospects for 2020. And uh, today we're looking at Jacob Perot, son of Yannick Perot. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see where this kid goes. So I'm wearing Dallas because it looks like he may very well be a project. He may be one of those guys who maybe slides down. He may be one of those guys who gets picked up by a team that doesn't need somebody who's going to be ready right away. Might be a little rougher on the edges, but just has that top-notch aspect of his game that's just too tantalizing to pass up. And Dallas may very well be the team that does that. He's 5'11 and 198 pounds. One of the reports was he needs to watch his weight. And, and motivation seems to be part of it with him. But his strengths, teamwork, shooting accuracy. So he's a good passer and his shot is fantastic. It showed the offensive and de defensive sides of his game are near equal. Although, not in the elite level of guys in the top 10. Guys that was profiling early in this draft series. So... He's considered to be a good player on a poor team in Sarnia. And maybe that's part of what goes on with him. Maybe it's that the team's not very good. So, eh, maybe. Uh, best shot in the draft? Well, it depends who you ask. But it seems like his slap shot might very well be at the top or near the top of the draft class. And his snapshot is tops, apparently. So, in a draft class that's considered to be very talented and a deep draft class, he stands out offensively. And he's considered to be a pretty solid passer as well. But the challenge comes in with away from the puck. The challenge seems to be one of away from the puck. A lot of the the scouting reports I was looking at were talking about he's kind of lazy. And, and they didn't like his, his coming back to play the puck. Where if you're a scout and you're timing guys and, and you're going, okay, the puck's in his own zone. It took him five seconds to get back to his own zone. Which to you and I, five seconds doesn't sound like a lot. But in hockey terms, that's that's an eternity. That's a lot can happen in five seconds. So he does need to work on that effort and that consistency. Again, I think it'll be a better team that doesn't necessarily need a prospect to be ready right away who might take a, a flyer on Jacob Perot. And if it becomes if he becomes as good at, at, for, at face-offs as Yannick was, that's pretty solid as well. And, you know, the, the reports, basically, if he was, if he played with more effort, he could be a top 20 pick. So they're not necessarily seeing him as top 20, but most scouting reports say he doesn't fall out of the first round. There are some scouts saying, I don't have him in my first round. Uh, and then there's other reports, he's going to go higher than people think. In that, you know, you may see somebody go up there and go, hey, Boston Bruins select with a... Anyways, <laughs> Boston Bruins, I don't have to worry about Boston doing that this year. Are you serious? Senishin. Anyways, Jacob Perot, uh, we'll see where, where he ends up. He's number 16 on the hockey prospect list. They seem to be higher on him than everybody else. ISS has him at 27. Central Scouting has him at 17th among North American skaters. Elite Prospects has him at 23. And Bob McKenzie has him at 21. Keep in mind, everybody's well aware of, of the work ethic complaints that may be out there from scouts. And they're still all projecting him to be a first rounder because his shot is that good. His offense is that good that you can't just throw everything else away and go, well... Forget it. Uh, last year with Sarnia, 63 games played, 30 goals, 25 assists, 55 points. This year for Sarnia, 57 games played, 39 goals, 31 assists, 70 points. So projecting out to about 50 goals, probably goes back and plays for them again next year and ends up with 50-plus goals should they have a full season, all that other wonderful stuff, right? Uh, not knowing how the 2020-2021 season is going to work in juniors any more than we know how anything's going to work with professional sports. So yeah, Jacob Perot, it's going to be interesting to see how this works. Because again, when you've got a shot at a kid who may have the best pure shooting in the draft class, you have a chance at a guy who is a pretty darn good passer as well. You can work on other aspects. But there may be fans who see this and say, well, we'd rather our team didn't draft him. There may be GMs who say, well, the effort just isn't there. And, and just reading this, you know, the name that came to mind for me was Pavel Brendel. Pavel Brendel had all of the offensive talent in the world. The effort just wasn't there to equal it. So at the NHL level, it never panned out. So, yeah, I don't see him going top 10. Probably not in the top 15 slash top 20. So for Dallas, they're probably going to be drafting well below 20. I'd kind of like to see them drafting 31st. I'm just throwing that out there. But, you know. Uh, there are other teams that if they drafted 31st instead, I'd be happy about, but not very many. Uh, so yeah, this uh, this is going to be interesting to see how this works because 
again, does the offensive side, does his overall game matter more than where scouts see that effort not necessarily being there? So that's the question mark when it comes to Perot, and where do you think he goes? So where in the draft? How do you feel about Jacob Perot? Let me know in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you browse your way through. You just happened upon this video. And hey, thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.